Hey, John Tay here, and welcome to this four-part video series on how to become a best-selling non-fiction author in 30 days. This is video three, and it's all about launching your book and becoming a best-selling author. So let's take a quick look at what we're covering in this video series and specifically what we're covering today. So in video one, we looked at the explosive growth of Kindle publishing. In video two, we looked at choosing a profitable niche, the seven steps to writing your book fast, and how to quickly and easily format and publish your book. And if you haven't watched videos one and two yet, I really recommend that you go back and watch them first and then come back to this video. What we're gonna cover today is getting your book found and noticed, and those are two very different things as I'll explain in a moment, and launching your book and becoming a best-selling author. So let's get straight into part five, which is getting your book found and noticed. So let me explain why both of these elements are critical if you're gonna sell a lot of books and become a best-selling author. And by the way, I love this image because the money in Kindle publishing, whether that's through royalties or through lead generation and building a back-end business, really is through getting your book found. And so while it's great to be able to send people through a direct link to your book's page or have people searching for your book, to be really successful, you want your book to be found by people who've never heard of you or your book before. That is what's gonna push your book up the bestseller list, and that is what is gonna get you known by a lot more people. So for that to happen, your book has to show up in the results when people are searching Amazon using relevant keywords. You also want to make sure that your book is showing up in the also bought sections on the pages of other similar books. In both cases, that's gonna introduce your book to a lot of brand new, highly targeted prospects. And I'll show you how to do that in the next few minutes. The other critical part of this is getting your book noticed once it's shown up in the search results and in the other places where Amazon will promote it once it becomes successful. And that's because on an Amazon page, there's lots of noise, lots of books competing for attention. So if yours doesn't stand out and get noticed, it isn't gonna get clicked on and then it's not gonna get bought. And so the way to think of this is that there is a linear process that somebody will go through when it comes to somebody discovering one of your books for the first time and then the steps that they'll go through before they make a decision to buy it. So that's what we're gonna cover now. And we're gonna start with an attention grabbing title. Now your title has two roles and these are linked to both getting your book found and getting it noticed. First, your title needs to grab the attention of your prospect. Second, your title should help your book rank in the search results, both Amazon search and Google search. Now of these, Amazon search is the most important. It's where our book buying prospects are and Amazon is a buyer search engine. But don't underestimate the importance of having your book rank on Google as well. Because Amazon is such a high authority website, you actually have the chance to piggyback off that authority and have your books page rank on Google as well. And that can lead to a lot of extra sales. So keywords are an important part of your title, both to grab the attention of the people who are looking for your book, but also to get the attention of the search engines as well. One important caveat though, before we go on to look at keyword research, and that is don't sacrifice a great title for keywords. And what I mean by that is if you've got a great attention grabbing title, which is a really good fit for your audience, don't try and shove keywords in there just for the sake of it and ruin the title. Focus on people first, search engine second. And so what you can do then, if you've got a great title, is incorporate the keywords into your subtitle instead, which you should be doing anyway. But as I say, don't sacrifice a great title for keywords. So when it comes to doing keyword research for your title and subtitle, there are two important keyword research tools. And the good news is they're both free. The first is the Google Keyword Planner, and the second is Amazon's Kindle Store Search. And what I'm talking about here is the Amazon search bar, but specifically within the Kindle store. So if you look at that little screenshot there, uh, I've got it set to search within the Kindle store. So you wanna make sure that that's where you're searching. And what you'll find is when you start typing keyword ideas into that search bar, a drop down menu will appear with suggestions from Amazon. So let's look at the advantages of each. And we'll start with the Google Keyword Planner. Now you'll have to set up an account for this, but you don't actually have to spend any money, so it's still free. Uh, it's great for generating ideas and it shows the numbers of searches for each term. So what you can do is start with a few keywords that you think might be appropriate for your title and subtitle, put them into the Keyword Planner, and it will show you exactly how many people are searching for those keyword terms on Google each month. The other thing it will do is give you a list of suggestions of related keywords and keyword phrases based on what you've typed in. 
And this is really powerful for generating ideas because chances are there are going to be things in there that you just wouldn't have thought of without the help of the Google Keyword Planner. The advantages of the Amazon Kindle store search are that it shows you exactly what people are searching for on Kindle. So that drop down menu that I talked about when you start typing the keywords into the search bar, the search terms in that drop down menu are actually based on what people are searching for in the Kindle store. And if you look at it, it's not in alphabetical order. It's actually shown in order of popularity. So although you don't get to see the number of searches in the way that you do on Google, it is still really powerful information. And each of these tools complements the other. And so as you go through this process, create a short list which you can use to then go on and craft your title and subtitle. So when you're ready to craft your title, I want you to think newspaper headline. As I said earlier, your title has to grab the attention of your prospect and you only have seconds to do that. It must be attention grabbing enough to stand out from all the other noise on the page and it also needs to speak directly to your target market so that they know the book is relevant to them. So that's why I say think newspaper headline. You know, when we pick up a newspaper, typically we don't read the whole thing from start to finish. We scan the headlines. If a headline interests us, we'll go on to start reading the article underneath. But if the headline isn't of interest to us, it's very unlikely we're going to look at the article, however good, however well written that may be. It's the same for your book. A short title is usually better than a long one simply because people are skim reading, they're in a hurry, and as I say, you only have seconds to grab their attention. And the bottom line is this. Without a good title, people are not going to click on the thumbnail of your book, and so you're not going to make the sale. Somebody else is. So here are some guidelines for creating your title. Ideally, your title should be easy to read and remember. Subconsciously, people think that if a book's title is easy to read and remember, then the book will be as well. And conversely, that if a book's title is difficult to read, understand and remember, then the book will be as well. And to make your title easy to read and remember, what you can do is try and incorporate the three R's, rhyme, rhythm and repetition or alliteration. And you don't have to have all of these in, but the more of these that you can have, the better. So here are some examples. The Cat in the Hat, The Great Gatsby, Pride and Prejudice, The War of the Worlds. These are all classic book titles for books that have been successful over decades or even centuries. And my favorite example here is The Cat in the Hat because that has all three. It has rhyme, cat and hat rhyme. It has rhythm, the cat in the hat, da 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 da. And it has the repetition, the alliteration of the at sounds in cat and hat. In the others, you have alliteration and you also have some rhythm as well. It's really important that your title speaks to your target market. You have to communicate instantly that the book is of relevance and interest to them. If you can make your title exciting and or controversial as well, that's even better because that both helps to grab attention and it draws people in. It makes them want to know more and click on your book's thumbnail. And bearing in mind that this video series is focused on nonfiction books, if you can, you want to make a big promise. Either that the book is going to help the reader avoid some sort of pain or that it's going to help them gain some pleasurable result. And bear in mind that that might be something you do through your subtitle rather than your title because your subtitle can be longer than your title, so you have a bit more flexibility there. And so the way to think of it is that your title grabs the attention of your prospect, gets them wanting to know more, and your subtitle builds on that, hooks them in even further, gets them wanting to find out more about your book. Now let's go on to talk about your cover, and you really need to have a cover that pops off the page. And this goes right to getting your book noticed. Your keywords can help you get your book showing up in the search results, but you're still competing against lots of noise on that page. Typically, 20 results to a page. So your cover's got to stand out and draw the eye. So you want it to be bright and bold. Now, when it comes to the title that you've spent so much time researching and crafting, it must be easy to read. OK, people must be able to clearly read your title while your book is still showing as a thumbnail. Otherwise, they probably won't end up clicking on it at all. And so uppercase is normally best for your title and you want your title wording to be in a highly contrasting color to the background field so that it shows up really well. Now let's talk about getting your cover created. Now within the KDP platform, there is a cover creator built in and you'll find that when you go to publish your book. At the moment, it really isn't very good. So I recommend that you don't use it. Of course, it may improve over time. Now you can easily go out and spend three to $500 on cover creation. 
There are websites that specialize in this and you can Google them or you could go to a site like 99designs and run a competition there. And you can get great results doing that. But if you want to keep your costs down, you could spend $5 on Fiverr.com and get some results that are as good or nearly so. And that's, if you don't know this website, it's Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. And one of the great things about Fiverr is because it's so cheap, you can get multiple designs done by multiple designers. And once you've got a winning design, whether you choose that yourself or run a survey or get feedback from social media, you can always pay a little extra to get the designer to fine tune and perfect that design. So you've got the expensive option, but don't forget Fiverr. You can get some amazing results for just $5. What I'd like to do now is share a bit of bonus content with you. And that is to talk about Facebook ad cover testing. Now, if you remember in video one, I talked about the book Never Work Again by Erlen Backer and how I ran a campaign for that that took it from 30 sales worldwide in a month to over 7,000 sales over the course of the next year and over 20,000 downloads. And eventually, within about 18 months, Erland hit 100,000 combined sales and downloads for that book through Amazon, through his own website and through other platforms. Now, one of the most important things that I did as part of that campaign is tested a series of different covers and ended up with a design which had a 338% better CTR, and that stands for click-through rate, than the original cover. And you've got the before and after versions here. The before version is on the left and the winning cover design is on the right. And just a couple of key things to point out here. First of all, we've got the title, Never Work Again. On the winning cover design on the right, the contrast is much higher. You've got the yellow that really stands out against that blue background, whereas with the gray, it sort of merges into the background a bit. Uh, the original title was You Will Never Work Again, and the designers tried to be clever by turning you will into a V. But unfortunately, when you're trying to grab somebody's attention really quickly, that can be a little bit confusing. So we got rid of that. And the other one of the other big things that we did was we changed the we've got the open road freedom metaphor in the original cover. We've changed that to a couple on a tropical beach. And that image resonated much more and got much better results than the open road image, even though the metaphor is basically the same. And the way I tested this was by running Facebook ads to targeted traffic and comparing the relative click-through rates. And when you do this, you want to make sure that the only variable you change is the cover image. The advert headline and body copy and targeting all stay exactly the same. It's just the image that changes. And then you can do a like-for-like -like comparison and see which cover is gonna work best. And this is really powerful. Essentially, after doing just this one thing, we ended up with a cover that almost 3.4 times as many people were going to click through than the original. Now, it doesn't mean all of those were gonna go ahead and buy it, but a lot of those people will end up buying it and it's made a huge difference to the overall number of sales and downloads. And so a great way to do this is to narrow down to a short list of maybe four or five cover images and then run the Facebook ad test so that you can include both scientific and subjective elements in the final decision. The next step, once you've got your book found in the search results and you've grabbed people's attention with a cover that pops off the page and an attention grabbing title is to write a great description and use Amazon HTML. And that's because reading your description is the next step that people go through in that linear process before they'll buy your book. And don't worry about using Amazon HTML because in a moment I'll show you exactly how to do that without knowing a single line of code. Now the job of your description is obviously to get people to want to buy your book. And so really what you're doing is building on what you've already done with your title and subtitle. So your description, again, it needs to excite and intrigue your prospect. It needs to highlight the pain they will avoid and or the benefits to them of reading your book. And you also want to use keywords in your description because that will help your book get found in the search results, but you want to do it naturally. And that's because first of all, stuffing lots of keywords into your description doesn't work. The search engines are too sophisticated for that. But also because if you stuff your description full of keywords, it's not gonna read well. And if your description reads badly, people are gonna assume that your book reads badly as well. And so they're probably not gonna buy it. And for the same reason, don't pad your description. It reflects badly on you as a writer. Stick to those things that are really gonna motivate your reader and make them want to buy your book. Now let's talk about using Amazon HTML. And what I recommend you do is simply outsource this job to somebody on Fiverr. And the way to do that is this, type up your description in Word or Pages exactly the way you want it to appear on Amazon. 
then send that document to the person who's going to convert it into Amazon HTML for you. They will put in all the relevant coding and all you have to do is simply copy and paste that into the description box on your KDP bookshelf when you publish your book. So literally all you need to know to use Amazon HTML is how to copy and paste. And as you write your description, I recommend doing the following things. First of all, using short paragraphs to break up the text. You can use Amazon Orange for the book title and then use bold italics, underlining and bullet points to emphasize key parts of the text. And that's because we've been trained to understand that when we see text highlighted in one of those ways, it's something important. So this will encourage your prospect to read more of your description. And the more they read, the more likely they are to buy your book. I also recommend that you left justify your description rather than center justifying it. Occasionally I'll see a book with a center justified description and I just think it looks really unprofessional. So this is an example of the description that I wrote for the book, Never Work Again, using Amazon HTML. And you can see how I've broken it up there into small paragraphs. The longest paragraph you can see there is about two and a half lines. I've also used Amazon Orange for the title there at the top. I've used bold, underlining, bullet points and italics to emphasize key parts of the text. And so even if someone is skim reading and doesn't read the full description, the bits that they are likely to read are the ones that have been highlighted. So they'll pick up on key phrases like a successful and profitable business. And bear in mind that most authors don't bother to use Amazon HTML. They just put plain text in. So by taking a few extra minutes to do this, you really help to make your book stand out from the crowd and make it more likely that people will actually read your description and go on to then buy your book. So let's do a quick summary of what we've gone through to get your book found and noticed. We started by using keywords to get your book found in the search results. And then we used a combination of a cover that pops off the page and an attention grabbing title that speaks to your target audience to get your book noticed and get people clicking on the thumbnail. Once they do that, they'll be able to read your subtitle that builds on your title and really hooks your reader in. And they'll be able to go on to read your compelling and benefit rich description with its Amazon HTML highlights. So with that, let's move on to part six, which is launching your book and becoming a best selling author. So the first thing you want to do before launching your book is get some reviews in place because reviews equals social proof. And I need to make a distinction here between publishing your book and launching it. So in order to get reviews in place, you need to publish your book so that it's live on Amazon. But publishing isn't the same as launching. What I mean by launching your book is actually running a marketing campaign to sell lots of copies, push your book up the bestseller charts and really get it established on Amazon. And so it's really important to get some good, genuine reviews in place before you promote your book. And the social proof that those reviews create is very important, even if you're giving your book away for free. And we'll talk about why you might do that in a moment, because even when your book is free, there is a time risk and what I call the feeling stupid risk. Nobody wants to waste their time on a book that turns out to be no good. And no one wants to feel stupid for downloading a book that turned out not to be any good. So by having some good reviews in place, you create that social proof and reassure people that it's okay to download your book. And when you promote your book, particularly when you promote it for free, that can lead to hundreds and even thousands of additional downloads. And very important, don't post fake reviews. Amazon regularly take down fake reviews and you really don't want to get that black mark against your account. So how do you get pre-launch reviews? Basically reach out to people, ask fans, followers, people in your industry, if they'll give your book a review. Now there are two ways of doing this. You can either send out review copies or ideally, and this is what I recommend, set the price of your book to 99 cents, which is the lowest Amazon will allow and ask people to buy a copy so that when they post their review, that review shows up as a verified purchase. And you can see an example of that in the highlighted box in that screenshot there. And there are two advantages to that. First of all, People know that the Amazon review system can be game. So by having Amazon verified purchase there, that adds credibility and weight to the review. Secondly, if it's an Amazon verified purchase, it's very rare that Amazon will take it down. Now, the problem with sending out a review copy is the person might well have read your book, but Amazon doesn't know that. So they may end up taking that review down. When you're reaching out, asking people for reviews, remind them that if they don't own a Kindle, they can download the Kindle app for free for any desktop, laptop, tablet or smartphone. 
And finally, you need about five to 10 reviews to get started. Now, yes, more good reviews is better, but there's very much a diminishing return. So as a rule of thumb, I say, once you've got five good reviews in place, you're good to go. Now that you've got your reviews in place, let's talk about the launch itself. And the launch comes in two parts. First of all, a free promotion, and then secondly, a paid promotion. Now, in order to do the free promotion, your book will need to be enrolled in the KDP Select program. And that allows you to put your book up on Amazon for free for five days in each 90 day period. Now, there are pros and cons to having your book in KDP Select, but I recommend that for at least the first 90 days, you have your book in KDP Select so that you can take advantage of these free promotions. And you still have the option to unenroll from KDP Select at the end of that 90 day period. Setting up your free promotion is super easy and you do it in the bookshelf section of your KDP account. And I'll show you how in a moment. And I recommend that you do all five days at once. Now you do have the option of doing less than five days and of taking those five days and splitting them up. But by doing all five days at once, you get a momentum that you just won't get if you do a shorter time period or if you split those days up because you're gonna get a lot of downloads, hundreds, perhaps even thousands of downloads over that five day period, I recommend that you have a link to an opt-in page at the beginning of your book and at the end and a strong incentive for people to opt in. So give something away for free in exchange for people's email address so you can get them on your list and start building a platform. So even if you don't plan to create a back-end business, you're building a platform of people who are interested in what you're writing ready for when you want to promote your next book. Now this one is optional, but I recommend you take regular screenshots for proof of your book's success because it's really cool to watch your book climbing up the bestseller charts. And so it's nice to have a record of that. You also then have the option of using those screenshots in your marketing materials as you've seen me do in this video series. So why is the free promotion so important? Well, one, it's gonna give a huge boost to your paid launch. And two, it's going to lead to a big increase in organic sales. And the reason for that is, first of all, it shows Amazon where to promote your book. And that's because by getting hundreds or even thousands of downloads in a very short space of time, Amazon can take that data and work out what sort of person is going to be interested in your book based on the other books that they've bought. And then your book will start showing up in the also bought sections on the pages of those books and elsewhere in the Amazon ecosystem. And so that's what gives this big boost to your paid launch and leads to a big increase in long-term organic sales. The other thing it does is it shows Amazon that your book is worth promoting in the first place. So the more people you can get downloading your book and interacting with it, the more Amazon can see that it's worth promoting your book. And that is gonna put your book in front of thousands and thousands of highly targeted prospects. And so although giving your book away for free is really counterintuitive, it will actually lead to lots more sales. And because Amazon has so many customers, you don't need to worry about cannibalizing your paying customers because there are still going to be plenty of people left who haven't seen your book for free and who will discover it and buy it once it switches back to paid. The other thing to mention here is that if you don't give your book away for free, if you try and do this the hard way through selling your book, Yes, you might get there, but it will take much, much, much longer. It'll likely take weeks or very possibly months to get your book to the same position where it's showing up all over Amazon. And so because of the extra time it would take, you actually lose more than you would gain by not giving your book away for free. And I've got these three screenshots here to show you just how easy it is to set up your KDP free promotion. So you go into your KDP bookshelf, select the book that you want to promote and if you look at the top screenshot there, there's a little link that says manage benefits. Click on that. Go down to the second screenshot and it'll give you a choice between a Kindle countdown deal and a free book promotion. You want to select free book promotion and then click the link that says create a, free, a new free book promotion deal for this book. And then you'll get a window come up, which is the one we see at the bottom, where you put in the start date and the end date. And it will tell you how many you can see at the bottom right there. Uh, it'll tell you how many of your promotion days you've used. And that's it. Once you put the dates in, you just click save. Uh, you don't have to change the price. Amazon will automatically change it from paid to free and then back to paid again at the end. So it is super, super easy. You can set the whole thing up in less than 30 seconds. And so by running this free promotion, you create a really strong foundation for your book when it switches 
back to paid. And that takes us to what I call your 99 cent Kindle campaign. And so the first thing to say about the 99 cent Kindle campaign is I'm not suggesting that your book is permanently priced at 99 cents. What I am saying is that in order to boost your book up the bestseller list and get it established on Amazon quickly, you want to do a temporary discount to 99 cents immediately following your free promotion. And the reason I've picked 99 cents is that that is the lowest price Amazon will allow for your book. And by pricing your book at 99 cents, you turn it into the ultimate impulse purchase. So you're going to maximize the number of sales you make. So how do you set your 99 cent Kindle campaign up? Well, the first thing I recommend you do is that you run some ads on discount Kindle book sites. Now, there are lots of sites, just Google them, that promote discounted Kindle books. And they can be a very effective way of quickly driving book sales. I recommend you set these up at least two weeks in advance because these sites are getting quite popular now. And so they do book out in advance. Some of them book, uh, book out as much as three or four months in advance. They're high traffic sites. So as well as a lot of people visiting the websites, they have lots of social media followers and they send out daily emails and recommendations to their subscribers. And you want to make sure that you start your 99 cent Kindle campaign on the very first day after your KDB Select free giveaway finishes. So if you think of your free giveaway as days one to five of your launch, this should start on day six. And so that there's a smooth transition, what you want to do is make sure that your price is set to 99 cents before your free giveaway ends. Because remember, Amazon will automatically switch your book's price from free to paid once your free promotion ends. So make sure it's set up to switch to 99 cents. The next question is how long do you run this 99 cent Kindle campaign for? And there's no set answer. Basically, you want to run it for as long as your book is still climbing up the charts. So what you want to do is keep a really close eye on your book's Kindle ranking because you're going to get a boost anyway just from your free promotion because of all the organic traffic that's going to generate. You'll get an additional boost from your advertising campaign when you switch to 99 cents. And as your book is climbing up the bestseller charts, you'll get a further boost because it becomes more and more visible, more and more people will discover it. So it's going to climb the charts really rapidly. And your job is to keep an eye on that and wait for it to peak. Once it's peaked, it's not going any higher, it starts to come down. That's the point at which you can switch to your regular price. Now you can keep it at 99 cents. That will increase the number of sales. If you're using this lead generation, you'll get more opt-ins that way. But once the advertising is finished, once it starts to drift back down the charts, that's when you can switch it to whatever your long term price is going to be. So where should you promote your book during your 99 cent Kindle campaign? Well, I've already mentioned the discount Kindle book sites. Uh, Facebook pages and groups are a great place to promote your book. You can also do Facebook promoted posts. And if you want to run promoted posts on Facebook, you need your own group for that. So you need to set that up in advance or reach out to people who have existing groups and ask them to promote and you pay for that. You can promote via Twitter. And if you do that, I recommend you use hashtags so that people who aren't your followers can also find your tweets and therefore find your book. If you have an email list, this is the time to reach out to them and tell them that they can get a discounted copy of your book. And whether you have an email list or not, you can also leverage other people's email lists. And the way to do that is to build relationships with people in your space so that you've already got those relationships in place when it comes time to promote your book. Why is all of this so important? Well, as I explained a moment ago, it's going to boost your Amazon ranking and increase organic paid downloads, not just immediately during your launch campaign, but over the long term as well. Running a campaign exactly like this is how I sold 423 copies of one book in a single day. And I recommend at least $100 in ad spend on those Kindle discount book sites. And it should be what we call a self liquidating campaign. In other words, the royalties that you generate should be enough to at least cover the cost of the advertising. Now that's not guaranteed, but that is my experience. Now there are lots of discount Kindle book sites to choose from, but what I recommend you do is check the Alexa.com rank. And if you're not familiar with Alexa.com, it's a site that ranks the world's websites. And so I aim for sites that are ranking in the top 250,000. And so to illustrate why this two stage promotion is so important, where we have a free campaign followed immediately by a 99 cent campaign, I'm going to show you the results of a couple of these campaigns. And I am going to whiz through these because I did cover them in more detail in video one. 
So starting with the Freedom Diet, it hit number two in weight loss, which is the most competitive non-fiction category on all of Amazon. It hit number 247 on all of Amazon out of over 2.8 million Kindle books that were published at the time. That was enough to put it in the top 0.01%. It hit 423 sales in a single day, and that was enough to put it in the Amazon non-fiction top 10. And you can see on this screenshot that it's number two in three major categories, nutrition, weight loss, and weight management. Then we've got the book, Never Work Again. And as you can see here, it hit number one in all three of its target categories, entrepreneurship, teams, and outsourcing. And it began showing up all over Amazon. So here you can see it's number one in the category of business teams, but it's also the number one hot new release and the number one top rated book. It's this launch campaign that allowed Erlen Backer, the author of Never Work Again, to be able to celebrate combined sales and downloads of 100,000 books just over 18 months after we ran that first campaign. And it's what's allowed me to get my latest book, Make Money from Nonfiction Kindle Books, to number one in direct marketing, as you can see here, and also number one in advertising, and bizarrely, number one in accounting. And in terms of what that translates to in results, in just the first two weeks, it's become a number one bestseller in four categories, including my key target categories of direct marketing and advertising. It has over 4,000 combined sales and downloads, and it's generated over 3,600 new leads for my business. And so there are some examples of just how effective this launch campaign can be for getting your book out to thousands of people turning it into a bestseller and generating royalties and leads. So let's quickly recap the key elements of what we've covered in part six, launching and becoming a best-selling author. First of all, get five to 10 good pre-launch reviews in place. That's essential for social proof. Next, run a five-day KDP Select free promotion. And then immediately afterwards on day six, begin your 99 cent Kindle campaign and allow that to run for as long as your book is still climbing up the bestseller charts. And to get the most out of your campaigns, promote them through free or discount Kindle book sites, social media, and email. In the next video, which is video four, we'll be putting everything together and looking at how you can publish your book and become a best-selling author in as little as 30 days. So this is John Ty, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.